ഇബ്രാഹിം Uh, who will be helping us on uh, technical matters so he is also an assistant professor of international islamic university chittagong bangladesh all right uh, so uh, brother siddiq uh, brother ibrahim and uh, those of you are with me now uh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah and uh, very good evening as uh, we have participants from many other uh, countries also so uh, for, for those of you who are joining in the morning good morning <laughs> good afternoon and of course those of us in malaysia would be uh, good evening right okay uh, today's topic is uh, a very special one very important one and i would like to appreciate and acknowledge uh, uh, the efforts uh, made by the faculty of business and entrepreneurship of dafudil international uh, university and uh, surely uh, i strongly believe that uh, those of you who are participating in this event uh, will be benefiting a lot uh, we have been talking about uh, fourth industrial revolution uh, we do have a lot of disruptive uh, Uh, technologies and uh, those technologies are bringing a lot of changes uh, in our personal life in our industrial life social life and all that um, most of us we have been uh, uh, used to uh, getting online right uh, we do online banking we do online shopping um, we do everything now online uh, the world has becoming cashless and uh, before that we used to have to and go now we even we have now screen and go right <laughs> we we use the barcode and uh, we just uh, Uh, go through right and then even uh, we have situation now even my my city in malaysia now uh, whereby the clinic uh, sends the medicine to my house and uh, even uh, once i said uh, i need to bring my wife but she is not really very sure whether she can come in the clinic and then uh, the doctor said no problem prof what do you do you just bring a wife in the car and i will go out from the clinic and check her while she is sitting in the car <laughs> so that's the kind of world uh, that we are living now uh, with covid and uh, definitely the advanced technology that we have all right so uh, to this one uh, i'm going to share with you um, a very special topic that is not really included in many business school syllabus and uh, i always feel that uh, the students are having a uh, disadvantage of not having uh, those uh, very important topic in the syllabus okay so the, those important topics for business students are definitely one is crowd funding uh, fintech blockchain uh, internet of things cloud computing and and many other areas uh, which should be incorporated uh, in the syllabus for, for for the business students all right so uh, i definitely congratulate uh, the dafodil international university faculty of business and entrepreneurship for taking initiative of organizing uh, this webinar on a very specific and very special topic on uh, uh crowdfunding okay give me a minute let me show uh, my screen um uh, is this screen uh, can be seen all right okay so the topic that i have chosen is crowdfunding and introduction um uh, it's a student because i know most of you would be hearing about crowdfunding for the first time okay so that's why i put crowdfunding and introduction okay and definitely uh, i would like to introduce uh, from the beginning uh, the program is uh, being live stream using the platform for research and development the youtube channel uh, those of you who have not uh, subscribed the channel uh, you should be doing it now right uh, you can see the subscribe button just beneath the video you can just click there and subscribe the channel um once you go to the channel you will see uh, i have already uploaded about 35 videos on research methods so those of you who are doing degree masters or phd you will be definitely benefited a lot from this uh, youtube channel well um this is a question that i ask always to my mba students as well as degree students in the classroom uh, i will ask them what do you need to start up a new business all right so to start a new business what do we need uh, that's the basically question and most of the time the, the the most popular answer given by the students would be money and when i show uh, a bit this satisfaction of for not getting the full answer i will ask them uh, what do you need more than that you know uh, beside money what do you need so then another group of student will tell me capital 
So basically it comes back to the same, right? Money and <laughs> capital. Then when I um, stress on it again that I'm not very really happy with the answer, so they will give me another answer saying that we need assets to start up a business. And then when I ask for more, uh, then uh, some uh, students will say, we need family support to start up a business. And when I drill again, some will say we need education, some will say we need experience. Of course, these answers are not wrong. Uh, to start up a new business, we need uh, these elements definitely. But what is most important is basically uh, a new business idea or ideas, okay? A business is start with an idea. Uh, there are many people in the society, uh, they have a lot of money, but they do not involve in business, all right? In finance, we said, if the money does not bring money, then the person is a stupid. So money should bring money. Okay, so, but we see a lot of people having money, but those monies are not bringing money. So meaning something is wrong there, all right? And now even we are saying that uh, with the advancement of technology, while you are sleeping at night, uh, you should be still earning money, <laughs> okay? So business actually does not start with money. It is start with new business idea. So when you have new business idea and you prepare a business plan, and then you go to see people and tell them, this is the business idea I have, and those people have money, they might be lending the money to you. Even if you submit that proposal to a bank, the bank could be interested to support your business, all right? So it is not about money, capital asset, that comes first. It is all about the new business idea. That should be coming first, all right? Let me show you some figure. This is definitely, you know, Steve Jobs. Was he a rich man? He wasn't. His family migrated from Egypt to US. And even his father and mother could not really support him for his schooling. And then he was adopted by a family in US. And the race is the history, you know, right? So he was not a rich man. When he started the Apple, he did not start with his own money. Was he a rich man? Bill Gates? He was not. He was a school dropout. Huh? Many students will say we need education, experience, all that. But he started his business at the age of 12, being a coder. Okay. So when he become uh, 22, he became a millionaire. And when he become 31, he become a billionaire. So for him also, it was not about money. He has an excellent business idea. All right. Was he a rich man? Warren Buffet? He was not. And uh, even he, the little money he has, uh, I listened to his uh, video interview once. He said he invested for the first time when he was 11. And now he said, I was wasting my time or my life up until then. Meaning he's trying to say it was too late for him to start investing when he was 11. All right. So this person has become uh, sometimes second uh, richest man or third richest man in the world or fourth richest man in the world, but he was not a rich man, okay? So when he started the business, it's all about having ideas. Was he a rich man? Professor Muhammad Yunus, the Nobel laureate from Bangladesh. He was not. He was just an ordinary lecturer at Chittagong University, right? And then he came up with the idea of micro-credit projects. And then it popularized in the whole world. And he is, he is, you know, the history now. This is someone from Malaysia everybody respects. Tansri Said Mukhtar al-Bukhari. Was he a rich man? He was not, right? Um, when I went to his university, al-Bukhari International University, I was told that uh, he was dropout. And when he completed the diploma, first time he got a job, the first man's salary was only 450 ringgit. And he gave it to his mother. The mom, this is for you, you know. And the mother said, son, take this money, go to the orphanage house nearby and give the money there. He said, mommy, you work so hard for me. You know, first man's salary, I want to give it to you. He said, no, 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 take it, give it to the orphanage house. And those of you are Malaysian, you know who he is now, all right? So he was not a rich man. So when he started business, he was not a rich man. Was he a rich man? Tansri Bunsiu, right? He was not. Uh, those of you know his life history. He was not a rich man, right? He started as a mechanic and he became one of the richest men in Malaysia. 
And those of you are joining me from Daffodil International University, uh, the owner of the university, Dr. Sabur Khan. Uh, was he a rich man when he began his career? So I leave this question with you. You may want to see him and ask him how did he start it? How did he start his career as an entrepreneur? And now I was told that he pays 70 million taka monthly salary to his university staff. Okay, so you have to go and ask him, uh, were you a very rich man when you started your entrepreneurial initiative? He was not a rich man, okay? So that's how uh, you have to look at it. If these people were doing the same thing that we have been doing, like me, we could have been just working and earning money for the family, and we could not have given the benefits to the society. But those few people I have shown you has created jobs for millions of people has helped millions of people worldwide, okay? And that's where I want you to think about. At this age, is the right time for you to start thinking whether would I be employed under someone or I'm going to be the boss of myself and I'm going to employ people in my organizations or companies, okay? Now, uh, that's where uh, I will start. Basically, uh, crowdfunding, the idea of crowdfunding is, is it's a practice of funding a projects or venture by raising many small amounts of money from a large number of people and typically via internet. Okay, that's very important. Uh, many of us, we think crowdfunding can be done in any way without internet and all that, but to have a uh, protected you know, um, investment, uh, you have to have regularized uh, platform which comes under uh, legal support and uh, some standard regulation so that the money is drawn, it can be traced back, okay? So the basic idea of crowdfunding is basically we take money from many people, so everybody join hands with a small amount of money, and then we take that money and start up a project. So that is basically the crowdfunding, a small amount coming from many people, and that become a big amount, and we start up a projects. But again, for you and me at this moment, when you talk about crowdfunding, we have to remember that money which is drawn by using internet, that will be called as crowdfunding. So I am eliminating one of the misunderstandings that many of us we have, that we can draw money in any way and it's crowdfunding. Officially, it is not. It has to be in a regulatory framework, right? Under a regulatory framework to draw the money for a project. Now, this is how it is, right? Everybody gives a small, a small amount and comes in, it become bigger. So that's how it is. Uh, the money coming from everyone is small, a small contribution, and it become a big amount to support the projects that you talk about. As I go through, uh, I hope, inshallah, you will understand the topic very well. Is crowdfunding something new? That's a question I want to ask you. Is the crowdfunding something new? It is not. Huh? Uh, in my home, I used to see when I was very young, my mother used to save one handful of rice when she used to put rice in the rice cooker. So that handful of rice, every time she cook rice, she will keep it in a pot separately. And after one week, you know, the Imam or Bilal of Imos will come and collect it. So they will collect from every house. With that rice, you know, they accumulate, they will sell, the money comes from that proceeds is to be the salary for Imam and Belal for the mosque in the village area. So that is crowdfunding, you know. So it is not something new. Uh, we have seen that uh, a poor man is not able to support the marriage ceremony of his daughter. And he extends his hand to people. And many people contribute a small, small amounts to him. And then he support the wedding ceremony of his daughter. That is also crowdfunding, all right. Sometime in our family, the youngest one, is pursuing education and he doesn't have any fun. And we see that father is contributing, mother is contributing, eldest brother, sister contributing. And that money is that being accumulated to support his study. That is also crowdfunding. Right? Now, uh, we do have in our countries, right? Many countries, when you have big celebration, we do also collect funds from people. We extend hand to people and people uh, just generously contribute their fund in a small fund. Uh, for for the success of the projects or even and then we see the money is collected 
and then um, the event is done. So that is also crowdfunding. Okay. Um, when we are in the school uh, at at uh, form three or four or five, in the school activities also sometimes uh, we friends we used to get together, we collect money and then we go for a picnic. There's also crowdfunding. You know, <laughs> you get money from friends together, or you are getting also some support from parents and others, accumulating that money and going for a picnic. It's also crowdfunding. So that kind of crowdfunding idea was there. It is not something new. What is new is we have internet now and we have a regulatory framework. With the legal framework, we collect the money to make sure the money is not misappropriated or misused. Okay, so it is not something new. Uh, let me give you some example. This is in UK. Many UK big buildings, so sculptures that you see are built using public subscription. Okay. And in then there was a famous case in America in 1885 when the Statue of Liberty was built. Then there was a funding crisis. And then uh, the newer governor refused to, to you know, uh, give funds to complete the projects. So what happened? Um, the whole world, you know, it was, it was coming through the knowledge of it and they, the committee has extended for help. And donation started coming from all over the world, eh? starting from 50 cents until up to 250 US dollar. Okay, and there were 160,000 people donated from, from US. All right, so it started with 100,000, and finally, about roughly 2 million in total in that time, eh? 1985, was raised, and the Statue of Liberty was completed. All right, so that was the birth of crowdfunding. In American politics okay so people are helping to build the Statue of Liberty I think many of you uh, we do not know about it so in UK it is there US also being long time it is there now uh, let us look at some uh, bookish definition of crowdfunding so crowdfunding we see refers to financial contributions from online investors huh? be, be careful uh, and be um, you know attentive to this uh, Basically, it has to be online. Crowdfunding refers to financial contributions from online investors, sponsors, or donors to fund non-profit or for-profit initiatives or enterprises. So crowdfunding is an approach to raise capital for new projects or businesses by soliciting contributions from a large number of stakeholders following three types of crowdfunding modeling. Huh? So the three types are basically number one, it could be donation, could be philanthropy or sponsorship where there is no expected financial return. So this is something non-financial and this is very common almost in every country. People donate. When we have a project to run and we are short of money, people will donate to it, right? And they do not expect anything from there. When you organize big events, then we look for sponsorship. We will see many industry, even organizations will come in. Some individual will come in and sponsor to the projects without expecting any return. That is the first kind of crowdfunding that we have. Eh? But this is basically through internet. Uh, we are talking about a legal within a legal framework. The second one is we call it lending person to person. All right. So this one is basically you are considering a debt. You are contributing the money, money, money for an initiative or for a business with the intention of getting interest in mind okay so you'll be getting certain fixed amount of interest every month or every year so this is the second kind of crowdfunding uh, we see and the third kind which is basically investment in exchange of uh, for equity profit or revenue sharing so third one when we'd like to start a business then we ask uh, we, we do a drive to raise uh, money uh, through crowdfunding and then anybody who contributes he'll be given the profit or revenue as per the amount he has contributed for establishment of this initiative or the business. All right. Um, this is another definition. We said basically, uh, crowdfunding describes collective cooperation, attention, trust of people who network and pull their money and other sources together, usually via internet to support efforts initiated by other people and organizations. Right. So this is a and a uh, definition from US on the law and legal definition. And uh, it is in the available in the Wikipedia. So crowdfunding is basically we are saying it is a collective cooperation 
and trust of people who network and pool their money together okay to support a project and it has to be via internet why it has to be via internet i'm going to explain it uh, uh, more detail afterwards okay now this is another definition given we say the crowdfunding enables people to invest and contribute monetarily in various denominations to project their wish to support okay so it is normally done by an online tool or platform okay so i'm going to introduce uh, many a uh, few platforms to you which are very popular and uh, being uh, adopted by people around the world now these are the basically four kind of crowdfunding uh, we look at comprehensively uh, we divide into two one is investment model uh, other one is non investment model so investment model is for profit and non investment model is not for profit projects okay so investment model we divide into two basically it be debt based which is lending and the other one is equity based so it's basically sharing right sharing profit and losses and debt based would be expecting a fixed amount of interest every month or every year non investment models we divide into two one is reward based crowdfunding the other one is donation based crowdfunding okay if it is donation based crowdfunding then it is just a donation it is not for profit but yet no expectation at all zero expectation okay but reward based crowdfunding even though it is not for profit but still there will be some expectation of getting some kind of tangible or intangible rewards okay so i'm going to explain this uh, for uh, more again okay now uh, this is another way of showing it uh, for you to understand we say for equity base for financial return sale of registered security by mostly early age firm for investors so a firm uh, which will sell the shares to public all right at the initial stage early stage of the business that's equity base so the people who contributes will be shared uh, will be will be a part of the company therefore the profits or the earnings will be shared with them based on the investment they made the other one uh, for uh, for profit we call it lending base for financial return so it is a debt based transaction between individuals so it is not really secured we say mostly unsecured personal loan so you are lending person to person lending all right so you are expecting uh, some kind of uh, interest or you are expecting the money to be given back after some time reward base is non monetary donors have an expectation that recipients will provide a tangible but not financial all right uh, what happens you know uh, sometime uh, we do help people and then we expect uh, something at the end uh, some kind of reward given to you so it is like uh, uh, we do uh, you know support our kids always and when the mother birthday comes in sometimes you see the kids will accumulate accumulate the fund and they buy a big cake for her or something for her it is a reward right because she has been contributing to their uh, lives and uh, this is some kind of reward that the kids is giving her okay this is also one kind of crowdfunding right in in a literal sense the donation base is definitely as we said that uh, you have no uh, expectation no obligation no expectation and all that so you are just donating it um, there are many projects in the world we see now being run eh? in my place uh, back home uh, one of my classmate uh, he is running a very good projects what he does you know uh, he goes out at night on the street at the rail station and bus station so he has his group of people they will cook food and they will walk around those areas and whoever is there having uh, no food until now at night they will just feed them okay so there are a lot of people are donating money to his initiative so a kind of thing that you have seen when there was a problem with rohingya right they were migrating from myanmar to bangladesh for obvious reason you know there were people who were migrating from syria to turkey and many other cases like that you know the many people they will donate all right so it's called funding you raise fund and then you help them okay malaysia has been participating very actively with those migrant migration issues a lot of people will uh, contribute through card funding right so you accumulate the fund and then they'll make sure this money is given to the people who are 
uh, needed at that time. Okay, so that is donation base. So this is another you know slide that I put it again for your understanding. So we are saying basically it is for charities to support people when there is a disaster. You know, so you give as a relief, and uh, sometimes even we pay medical bills. You know, for people I know. Uh, there are people who are, comes to Singapore for treatment, you know, with very complicated disease. And uh, after, uh, you know, there sometimes they, they, they expire and their family couldn't support to pay the bill. So when they cannot pay their bill, they cannot take the dead body from the hospital, you know. So, and then we see that many people will really start donating, accumulating the fund to, to send the dead body to the, to the house, okay. So that is basically donation-based crowdfunding. All right. Um, this is a, a example of the platform available, which uh, I, I put a lot of emphasis on this, okay, for you, uh, for today's talk. For reward-based uh, crowdfunding, uh, there is a platform, we call it Kickstarter, Kickstarter, okay. So it involves individual contribution, comparatively small amounts of money to projects in return for some kind of reward. So if you're thinking of raising funds for this kind, then Kickstarter, the platform is available for you, okay? And then we have one more platform, we call it GoFund, GoFundMe, GoFundMe. Uh, this platform uh, is available for you, uh, basically to help you to raise money on donation-based count funding. If you have a disaster in your country and you feel like you would like to help them, but you don't have really money, so you can prepare a project telling them the rationalization, justifying why you'd like to raise the fund. And you can approach the GoFundMe platform. So you register there, they will run the campaign for you and they will raise the fund for you, okay? And then when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer lending, even there is another platform, we call it Lending Club. I'm going to have more discussion on this, huh? lending, lending Club. You can register yourself there and you have your proposal ready on the projects. And you can uh, ask them to drive a campaign for you. They will. Uh, and then you can raise that farm from there. So there are many kinds of platforms available. So it's not like you are going and uh, asking people to donate you through the Facebook. It's not. That is not crowdfunding. Uh. Crowdfunding is something regulated, you know, within a legal framework. So you have a platform that helps you to raise the money. You are not going to raise it. The platform will raise for you. All right. The platform will raise for you. So what you need to do, if you want to raise, I will have more discussion on it afterwards. This slide even give you more uh, comprehensive view of five types of crowdfunding, right? Earlier I have shown you four types, but here you see one more, right? Uh, one is crowd uh, reward-based crowdfunding. Then we have equity crowdfunding, person-to-person -person crowdfunding, right? Uh, so that's basically debt or lending. We have donation crowdfunding, and we have one more category. We can see now we call it royalty crowdfunding. So basically, whoever contributes to the projects, it has to be a business, right? An investment initiative, entrepreneurial initiative. He will be given percentage of profit. Okay, so that's what we call royalty. Yeah? Royalty. So this is definitely different, different from uh, equity uh, uh, crowdfunding because equity crowdfunding it depending on the board of director decisions, but here the royalty uh, could be depending on the projects uh, you have earlier and then later people join. So the royalty has to be paid on certain percentage. Now, which one is the most popular crowdfunding in the world? Okay. So based on the data that uh, we see, 71% uh, crowdfunding so far done in the world is based on reward based. So reward based crowdfunding seems to be the most popular one till now okay reward based okay and then followed by donation base 14 percent followed by lending base 12 percent and equity base is very small only three percent but research uh, finding shows that the equity base the one is now progressing first growing too first huh? because people are short of fund for many sources due to COVID and many other reasons uh, it started from 2008, you know, when we have global financial crisis, people started looking to alternative source of finance. That's where crowdfunding has become very popular. So even equity-based crowdfunding is getting very popular nowadays. 
All right. Um, this slide is the, I think, uh, one of the most important slides for tonight's talk. If you are thinking of running a campaign to raise money using the crowdfunding, then that's the process follows. And you have to really understand it very well. The first stage, we call it pre-campaign or your preparation. Okay. So you have to define projects, purpose, and needs clearly. You review and learn from similar projects uh, that has been done before. You have to choose the right platform, you know, looking into the kind of projects that you have. You build a mailing list so that you can share your projects with people. Then you warm up the existing network. So meaning that you are going to start with, you know, some kind of Facebook campaign, some page release and all that. Uh, so you start, you know, blowing in the whistle that something is coming. Then uh, you have to have investment in quality content, right? So you must have uh, some quality content developing the proposal, project proposals or on there so that people feel like they are investing uh, for the right reason, okay? Then uh, build social media reach uh, out plan. How are you going to meet or reach people using social media? Uh, that got to be start uh, planning from the beginning. You have to build attractive rewards or returns or compensation schemes. So meaning that when you are planning already for a crowdfunding, you have to keep in mind how are you going to reward or return to the investors. And you are thinking of how are you going to contribute to others. So these are the pre-campaign activities, pre-preparation that you have to do before you actually run the campaign, okay? So in stage two, we'll start the campaign. We call it execution. So when you go for execution, we provide constant update and information, which is very important. You choose a uh, platform, you've given them the materials, the contents, and they started running or executing your campaign, then you have to make sure you keep constant updates and information because people will be asking you a lot of questions, a lot of clarification, justification, and all kind of thing has to be there, right? So you have to reply quickly to comments, questions, and requests from the crowd. Then you have to activate network for contribution and social media and words of mouth reach out. So in your own network, you know, you can have your Facebook page, you can have your own YouTube channel, you know, some kind of social media where actually you can start talking to people and spreading that idea you have. You contact media, bloggers, experts, and influencers. So we can use some people who are very popular in the media. There are many. There are many bloggers who are very popular, okay? And there are many people who can influence people's mind. So you have to keep contacting with those kind of individuals and personalities who can use to drive, you know, and gain money for you. And ensure dynamic process and developments during the execution. So you have the preparation P campaign and then now you run the campaign. And that's not the end. Huh? After running the campaign, there are also, we call it post campaign stage. Or this way we call it relationship uh, building, okay? So you still continue to provide constant updates and information. You continue replying to comments, questions, requests from the crowd. You deliver on the campaign promises on time. In case of delays or problem, you have to report honestly and timely. Invest learning about new members in the network and reciprocate the contribution to others' campaigns, okay? So that makes it a full campaign, uh, compare the campaign process for a crowdfunding. So you have pre-campaign stage, you have a campaign stage, you have a post-campaign stage. As I said earlier, this is the most important slide, the most significant, impactful slide for tonight's talk. This slide got to be really understood. If one of you listening to me would like to run a crowdfunding campaign, then this is how you should be preparing yourself to run a campaign. And a pre-campaign and campaign and then post-campaign, three uh, steps or stages, uh, interrelated, interconnected, uh, to make sure you sustain with the project that you propose for a crowdfunding. Now, uh, the challenge now is basically uh, the mobile revolution. Uh, we are moving away from desktops and laptops, right? Uh, we do not really see it with always desktops and laptops. Uh, even we check our uh, internet, uh, email, all in the smartphone. So a smartphone is coming. So when a smartphone is there, it makes our life very difficult because anybody can log in at any time, can click at, at any time, and can put any comments at any time they want. Okay, <laughs> but when you 
when using uh, desktop and laptops, we do not really always see it with desktop or laptops. So when you only switch on the computer, we used to come in. We, we review, we come in, right? But now with mobile phone, uh, things have become too easy for people, OK? So you have to have very responsive web design, OK? Um, and for many skin sizes. So you, you, it cannot be only seen by computer, but also has to be in the mobile phone. And also mobile phone got different sizes, right? The smartphone, we have different sizes also. So uh, do you have people who use the tap? So there are many different kinds of uh, uh, instrument that we have now, OK? So website must conform to both TAS and non-TAS screen, right? So there are many computer where is it TAS screen, and we do also non-TAS screen. So the changes are taking place and making it hard for platformer or, or the campaigner to raise the fun. Huh? Mobile, huh? smartphone users are more eager to find content faster, right? That's how it is now. S must be functional, simple, and elegant. So the company website that we are going to design a campaign website that you are going to design beside the platform, it must be very functional, simple, and elegant. And a multi-platform usage would be more preferred, OK? Now, uh, the social one, actually, the crowd comes from society. So we have to make sure the interaction and sharing is, uh, is, 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 is always there. Huh? Because when we communicate with someone, even if one of you posts something in the Facebook and a close friend of yours doesn't put a like, then you, you will be unhappy, right? So that's what is happening now. So anything come from the customer when you are raising fund, using crowdfunding, uh, we got to be really interactive with the network that is there, OK? And we have to distribute uh, the information as soon as possible, right? So the news information that we have uh, got to be transmitted immediately with the people. And then we do have some uh, traditional also, right? Uh, users and developers still keep one foot in the null mobile world. So we are saying a site must also work on a traditional desktop mouse. So not only mobile, we do have also uh, uh, enable our platform or the site that we develop for specific crowdfunding, that that, that should be also used uh, usable uh, uh, in the laptop or desktop, which is not as a screen, right? OK. Um, this is how it is. Uh, you can go to uh, Google, and uh, you can look into the Crowd Navigator. Okay, uh, you can try it uh, after the session ends. You will see uh, that Crowd Navigator is there, which will help you to find out even which platform would be most suitable for you. Okay, so they will do a matchmaking. So once you have a proposal. So that proposal could be based on donation base, could be based on reward base, could be based on lending base, could be based on royalty base, or could be based on equity base, right? There are four types of crowdfunding that you look at. So if you're not very sure which platform would be most suitable for the kind of projects you have, then you can go to Crowd Navigator. This navigator will do a matchmaking for you. They will find the right kind of platform for you. And they will facilitate you know, the process of doing the crowdfunding process there. OK? Now, how does crowdfunding works? How does crowdfunding works? Uh, the basic principle is that you set a target sum to raise and a time frame within which to do it. So the first principle is start with how much you'd like to raise and within how long time. So say, for example, you want to raise 1 million and within three months. Or you have to raise 5 million within six months. Or you have to raise 10 million within three months. So your target sum has to be there, confirmed. And how long, you know, you the time you can allow to raise that fund. So that one is very crucial. That's a very crucial for the platform you choose to raise the crowdfunding, OK? Now, uh, once you have the target amount fixed and you know the time frame that you have, then you can then place your project on a publicly available platform and encourage people to visit the page through Active and plan outreach program using tools like social media and email. So you have a platform, right? A platform is there. And your web page is also active and there so that people who are interested to contribute, they can go and visit your page and understand the kind of projects that we have, right? Earlier, I have shown you the three stages, uh, the pre-campaign, the campaign, 
and then post campaign. So we are talking about the pre campaign, right? Uh, here now. So you have your targeted amount to be raised and the time frame, and then you have your own uh, page as well as you have a platform, right? Available platform when people can get the information they want. Now, uh, the basic intention is to appeal as many of these visitors as possible, right? Because you do not know how many of them actually going to contribute or fund your projects, okay? So you have to reach as many people as possible. And then from there, you will find that some people will start contributing and from there, they will go on. I will show you a data uh, that, that shows actually when your crowdfunding will pick up, okay? At the beginning, it may not be picking up, but after some time, it may start picking up. And then you collect the uh, financial pledges made by the intention of reaching the target set. So you will start collecting data on who is pledging how much. Uh, you can follow the platform and see how many people have already made a pledge and how much they wanted to contribute to you. Okay. Now, how big is the crowdfunding market now? Uh, in 2015, uh, the crowdfunding raised about 34 billion, uh, 34 billion worldwide. Can you imagine uh, 34 billion and every four years is becoming double okay every four years meaning that in 2019 it was 68 billion is getting double okay so many crowdfunding campaigns are, are quite small some but some are very large so most of the crowdfunding campaigns so far done in the world are actually small uh, some but there are also few uh, which actually look for big sum of money to be drawn now, the model of crowdfunding uh, which raised the most money in the lending model is the lending model where in UK in 2015, it, it, it total about 1.1 billion, okay, 1.1 billion lending model, uh, using lending model. So people are contributing with the expectation of getting fixed amount of interest at the end of the year. Uh, and then we are saying expecting that this figure will continue to grow. So this is how big it could be. Uh, it is projected. Then in 2025, uh, there will be 90 billion, uh, okay, the, the size of crowdfunding market, 90 billion. So everybody contributes $1, $2, uh, 5 ringgit, or 100 taka, 200 taka, you know, all the small, small money coming in, um, and then, uh, or real or rupee, whatever. And then at the end of it, it becomes $90 billion. Uh, so that's the market that we are looking at. So as a business students, you have to understand where it is, you know, what it is and how it is moving so that you yourself uh, may think is starting up, uh, you know, planning something uh, in mind, uh, starting up a new uh, projects or new business uh, using the crowdfunding, which is not difficult, right? As I started my talk today, a business is start with ideas. If you have an excellent idea, money is not a problem. Crowdfunding can be done, okay? So even if you have an idea, a very good idea, you can approach your friends who are in the classroom. Uh, would, would anyone would like to join me with this project? The project is a very good one. You will find some of your friends, your relatives, your schoolmates may be willing to join you, even without a platform. That could be a good card for you. But again, there is no legal framework, then it is unsecured, right? So if it is one to be sec legally secured, then you have to follow a platform, and then you can raise funds for your business, all right? When to do crowdfunding? A, a business basically goes through five stages we know, right? Uh, basically, we know is introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. Eh? <laughs> but World Bank uh, has given the crowdfunding potential. They have given you the curve in different way. Uh, it start with idea, as I said, right? Your business is start with idea, not with money. You start with ideas. So once the ideas are there, you look for uh, donation crowdfunding, reward crowdfunding, or uh, right or the kind of donation uh, crowdfunding and once we have that money you develop a prototype and when you see it is working then we start up once we start up the business that's where you need a lot of money so what did you do you might be going for equity based crowdfunding or you might be going for business lending crowdfunding a lot of money can be raised because here those people are contributing can expect some kind of financial returns okay the first two steps at the initial inception or prototype stage, those people who are contributing to your idea or business, they are not going to get any money. It's a very early stage of crowdfunding. 
So this money may come from your parents, uh, come from your relatives, come from very close friends, or may come from your lecturers and all that. Okay. So donation, crowdfunding. Myself, you know, now I think uh, if I see a student having a beautiful idea and want to start with, uh, you know, developing a, a prototype uh, to start up a business, I don't mind contributing to the business to encourage the student that he should be going for business. Um, it is a truth in the whole world, you know, that somehow uh, the students that we are teaching now, not many really are interested to become an entrepreneur, to start up a business. It's basically they think uh, it's risky and I don't have money, I don't have experience, I shouldn't be going for it. Huh? But those people that I have shown you the pictures at the beginning of my talk, uh, these all people who are like you and me at the school days and university days, they did not have money, but they had beautiful ideas and they were never short of money. Okay, they have never been short of money. So come out with a beautiful idea, very good idea. Uh, many universities I know, we do have a business plan project. A student got to submit a business plan project, you know, at the end of the graduation. Uh, so some students' business plan, even my faculty, I see some students' proposals are excellent proposal. And I always hope that some of them will really go into it, venture into it, and start up a small business, you know. So if you want to have, if you have a business idea, you can always look for reward or donation crowdfunding platforms are available for you. They will draw it from all wide. Okay, there are many people there. If your ideas are good, they will contribute. And then you develop a prototype, still people will be there for you on donation and crowdfunding. You got no obligation to pay back. Okay. But we have to be very, um, you know, here we got to be very sincere. We got to be very honest. We cannot be taking money from people and then I do something else. I show them a project and then later on I take the money and run away. Yeah? There are many cases I know. I know even my country, there are people after graduation, they are known in the area, being a good student, being a good man. And they tell people, I have this project, he developed a project and he, he raised money. And after one year with that money, he got married, he bought car and then no projects he started there, you know, and then he ran away from the area and people always look for him. So we are not looking at that kind of people. Huh? We are not going to look at people who will who are corrupted in mind and in character. We are not looking for that kind of people. We are looking for a sincere person who would like to have some kind of business to be started. Okay, that kind of person that we are looking at. So those of you who are listening to me, uh, I would be very, very, um, you know, excited if I see someone after three months or six months or one year down the road starting a business and asking me, Prof, would you like to contribute? a bit uh, for me to start up a business and definitely I'm very much willing to contribute for that. Okay. So take it and uh, start thinking of an idea and then I'm going to show you some platform. Those platform will raise fund for you as long as you have a very good projects in mind, a very good business plan. People are there to lend you money. So once you start a business, you may need more money. You still, you may not want to go to the bank. You can still go for equity and business lending crowdfunding and platforms are also available for this. They will raise the fund for you. And once you have that, your company may grow, right? Um, many companies will grow bigger and bigger. That's why you need more money. Then you can even approach to angel investors, rich people who has a lot of money and looking for good business ideas will be there to help you. And as you grow at some point, you know that your business is going on the decline stage, then you might be needing money, someone to help you. That's where you will Consider to have a venture capitalist. As we understand as a business student, angel investors are investors who are very rich, feel the rich, got a lot of money, uh, but do not have business ideas, looking for good business ideas. They give you money and they expect some returns from there. But venture capitalists could be individual. It could be a company, right? Uh, there are many larger MNCs now in the world. They do have venture capital division. They have a lot of money there left. And they are looking for good projects. So those kind of company or individual who has a lot of money, they might be interested to see a good project is running and suddenly is going to a decline. They might come and they rescue you and then they might take it over later. Huh? All the venture capitalists, either individual or organization, uh, the plan in mind for them always is to take over at some point, okay, the business. And then when you are towards the end of uh, the business, you might be, uh, short of fund, uh, even the venture capitalists are not willing. They might withdraw the fund from you, so you might be looking for uh, bank's help and all that. Okay, 
So this is a, a very beautiful curve given by World Bank. All right. So you start with the reward and donation based crowdfunding. So that answers the question, which crowdfunding should I use at the beginning? OK, so these are the two you'll be using. And as the business starts growing, the next question is, where do I find uh, uh, funds when my business is growing and really I need a lot of money? Then you should be going to equity and business lending crowdfunding. All right. And then as business grows on, you might be continuing to ask angel investors and continue to venture capitalists and so on. OK. Now, this is how it looks like, right? Source of crowdfunding. So again, um, you start with internal funds, right? And then you go for depth base, then you go for equity base. And that's, that's a normal way of looking at it, right? So we start with reward based crowdfunding. Then you continue to P2P, yeah? person to person lending. Then you continue to equity funding. And finally, uh, we are looking for matching of programs, uh, the projects that we have. Now, this is uh, uh, country wise crowdfunding. If you look at the UK is the country where crowdfunding is the most popular. Okay, 65 uh, million being drawn. Huh? Uh, following by, followed by Ethiopia. I'm very surprised, huh? Ethiopia. The crowdfunding is so popular. And then followed by Finland, uh, uh, Monaco, then uh, you know, uh, Latvia, and then uh, Netherlands, and all that. So, so it looks like uh, crowdfunding is more popular among. Uh, most of the developed countries uh, rather than developing or underdeveloped countries. And this way also crowdfunding around the world, it shows the data, right? North America, Europe, Asia, and all that. This slide would be available in my YouTube channel. Uh, based on this, today's live is streaming, live is streaming. You will have a video in my YouTube channel. You can just go to YouTube, uh, click on the right platform for research and development. You will get my uh, uh, YouTube, YouTube uh, channel. Uh, as well as um, you are now on live, uh, you can see under the video, you have a column there, subscribe. You can just click subscribe there. Then this video will be available there for you. And then we'll also post these uh, slides there for you. You can download the slide from there. Okay. And later also, we will share you a feedback form, uh, which everyone must fill in. Huh? You must fill in the feedback form in order to get the e-certificate. We are going to give you an e-certificate, everyone who has been uh, who are participating in this webinar. So we will show you on the screen the feedback form. Please make sure you fill in the feedback form. And if you cannot fill in during the session, we'll keep the feedback form even under this video for two hours after the session. So once the session ended, you can still go there and you click on the link and you fill in the form, okay? Then we will give you the e-certificate. Please don't forget uh, doing that, those of you are participating now. Now, this is uh, the Asian data that I have uh, on crowdfunding. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, China, it looks like the, so far, they have raised up to 60 billion to 100 billion using crowdfunding. Okay, then India is 27.8 million. Philippines, uh, I mean 26 million. And Nepal even, a small country, so far raised 25.5 million uh, by using crowdfunding. In Africa even, Country like Kenya, uh, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, the crowdfunding seems to be getting uh, popular also, right? So in Asia and Africa, the developing or underdeveloped countries where crowdfunding also getting popular. The earlier side has shows uh, most of the developed countries, even the underdeveloped or developing countries are also using crowdfunding now. These are the, some very interesting facts and figures on crowdfunding, okay? Uh, based on the Indiegogo, uh, this is a platform. Uh, they said basically, if you use video presentation, then you can even raise more than 100% compared to the text uh, uh, content that you develop. So, if you are starting a campaign to raise funds using crowdfunding, make sure you have a very good video presentation, not the presentation is in text. Okay. And then uh, campaign evolving teams raise 70 times more than just one person. This is a very good uh, lesson for us. Huh? Those of us are planning uh, to do crowdfunding to start up projects. We cannot do alone. So if I do alone, the chances are very slim. Okay, uh, People will not trust you and give you the money. So when you have a strong team, when they see 7, 10 people or 20 people, a strong team, an organization structure of CEO, managing director, and all that, then the chances are there that you will raise 70% uh, more chances that you raise the fund that you want. 
The third interesting uh, fact is that uh, uh, when you have problem in English language, <laughs> uh, it even decreases the chance of raising the fund by 13%, meaning that because the, the, the platform is in English, so when you prepare your documents, make sure it is properly written, okay, properly written content, uh, uh, either in the video or any other website format also, it has to be very well written proposal, okay. Number three, very interesting. Earlier I said, eh? earlier I said, when do you see that you are really making it? So if you want to raise, say, for example, 100 million, and people, those are crowd who are watching your video content and visiting your website, they, they always follow how many people actually contributing. So when they see 30% being already contributed, then you will see a jump then many people really started contributing, okay? So they develop some kind of trust, confidence that this project is going to run. So once 30% is done, meaning if you want to raise 100 million, once 30 million is already contributed by many people, then the raised 70% would be very easy, okay? So it's the beginning, which is very important, huh? very important. And the kick starter, huh? kick starter, the platform, they say two thirds of women lend projects reach their funding compared to men. <laughs> so this is another good um, lesson for us. If you are preparing a video presentation, video content, then you should be using a female model than a male model. <laughs> I think that is one of the reasons why most of the campaign that uh, around the world people run, they always use female model, okay? So if you are running a campaign to raise funds using crowdfunding, then you should be using a female model based on the Kika starter uh, platform data available, okay? So for me, I have summarized for me, uh, some takeaways from me from the earlier slide. So if you are planning for a campaign, you should use a video campaign uh, rather than text campaign. That's number one takeaway. Number two, you cannot start alone. There must be a strong team. You have to project that this project would be managed by experienced and, uh, and an educated, you know, uh, well-balanced team so that people perceive that this project is going to be successful and then only they will give you the money, okay? You have to ensure that the proposal is written in good English. Uh, so as I said here, I put it, proofreading is the key here. So if you are writing the proposal and your English is not really very good, then you should find somebody who will proofread your work and make sure that the content is really presentable and understandable by everyone. Please understand uh, uh, one very serious concern here. People who are going to contribute to you are not the people on the street, you know. People who usually visit platforms because they want to contribute something. Doesn't matter on what form, it could be donation, could be royalty, could be lending, could be equity, you know. But Again, those people are going to visit the website. They are people who understand English very well. So when they see your English content is not very good, they will feel like you are not capable, you are not skillful to run a project. So that one you have to keep in mind. Number four learning from the last uh, slide, previous slide is, first impression is the last impression, right? They said, people wait and see. Once they see 30% is contributed, then they start jumping and contributing more and more. The 70% will be very soon given so meaning that first impression is very important first impression so what makes the first impression uh, is the video that you prepare so it has to be very good content very rich content that justifies that rationalizes the kind of projects that you like to drive through okay that the kind of initiative that you want to take in it got to be very impressive very justified and rational okay so if you want to create an impact from the beginning, that there must be some coordinated effort eh? and the appeal goes to be very justified. All right, and uh, finally we said that uh, you have to use a good model. So it looks like a female model works better for the campaign. Some of the, the key starter uh, data they have summarized. Uh, those projects use a male model uh, and those you project use female model, it looks like those Project your female model are more successful than using a male model. Uh, it doesn't mean that you cannot use a male model. Huh? <laughs> uh, there are many very good uh, male models available in the world. Like uh, we have Messi and uh, Ronaldo. We, we have some cricket, you know. 
uh, figures there. We, we, we have some actors and actress, actors also available, which are very popular. So uh, you can use a very good looking, uh, very well spoken, you know, elegant uh, male uh, uh, model uh, to run the campaign for you, definitely. Okay. So these are the many platforms available for you, uh, for you and me, basically. If I want to run a project through crowdfunding, there are many there. Uh, you have Jekus, you have Crowdpath, you have Crowdfunder, uh, right? You have Co-Founder, you have Indie, GoGo, Kickstarter, you have many. Okay, Bash BNK, Bash BNK and many other uh, available for you. But later I'm going to show you, not all platforms are open for you. Certain platforms are close to their country only. It is not international. So I'm going to pick few, very popular one. I'm going to uh, and then describe them to you, explain them to you, how do they work. So uh, choosing a platform, right? So we say that each will have their own process of setting up, but you will basically need to have username and password. So when you go to your platform, you will create your register yourself, and then you will be given a username and password, and that's where you will get it started, OK? So I'm going to explain you uh, the most popular US one Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and then uh, US based one also, the Bus Bank and uh, uh, Space Hive. Huh? Space Hive. I'm going to explain or describe this for to you. This is Indiegogo, huh? and it said that uh, this platform, you can just go to Google and type Indiegogo platform for crowdfunding, it will be there for you. It's open uh, to any kind of projects, anywhere in the world. So this is for you and me, for everyone, huh? is US based, but it is open for all. So what do you need? A good business idea, good content. And if you prepare a business plan, if you prepare a video presentation, then you should be able to go there, huh? Indiegogo. Huh? So they, 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 they have a lot of tools and uh, you know, support to track your projects even. So that answers another question of what happens if the people take the money and run away? They can't. Huh? Once you are registered with Indiegogo, they will follow uh, the projects. They will track your projects. Okay, And uh, and it offers the opportunity to keep money raised from campaigns that do not reach their goal. Huh? So in case if you are running the campaign and if you do not reach the goal, they'll keep the money data, they will give back to the contributors in case if you do not want to continue. Okay? Now, they have two plans for you. The flexible one is 4% uh, if you meet the goal, meaning that you want to raise 1 million and they manage to get 1 million, they will charge 4% from there. Okay? And 9% uh, if you don't meet that target. And you will keep the money in either case. Okay? So if you want to raise 1 million and you raise all, they charge 4%. If you want to raise 1 million, but you, you, you raise about 800,000, they will charge you 9%. Okay? Now, there's a fixed one. If you choose the fixed plan, then it'll be 4% if you meet the goal. Okay? So no fees. So you are going on a fixed one. Okay? So it can be done. All right. So this is a, a platform which is available for every one of us. And the fees is not really high. And uh, once you have a good business idea, good content, good video, uh, with good model, you know, uh, we can actually uh, go choose this platform and we can run it and raise the fund that we need. This is the Kickstarter, which is uh, one of the biggest crowdfunding sites. And so far, it has raised, uh, you know, in, in 2011 itself, it used 100 million. And then in 2012, it used 200 million even. Huh? And uh, this is also open in any kind of projects uh, anywhere in the world. But, but, uh, but, <laughs> um, the one who created the campaign and founder, he must have an US presence. Uh, he must be basically physically present in US. So this one actually not for you and me. So if, if you are a Malaysian or if you are a Bangladeshi, then you have to be based in US. Then only you can use this one, Kickstarter, which is very popular, the most popular actually, the most popular platform. But this is basically for people who are US citizen or people around the world, but they live in US. Huh? For them, it is available. This is very popular and this is very actually helpful uh, uh, platform. And the charges are like 5%. Uh, it says charges a 5% fee from project funding total if it is successful. And they charge additional 3 to 5% for processing. Okay. So the tips is basically saying that set your project goal include this additional cost. So if you need $1 million uh, to run a project, make sure you add up this one. Okay. <laughs> you must have a, a markup of this amount. So you need $1 million. Uh, then you have to mark up with this percentage could be about uh, 1 million and 
uh, and, and say 100,000, okay? So you have to add on that additional amount for that, okay? Uh, all fees are calculated automatically. The, the platform is built in a way, uh, it, it, it is very uh, uh, communicable one. Uh, it, it, it displays uh, the project uh, promoter dashboard as well as the costing tab, okay? So your website will be directly connected with the, this platform. How much money is being drawn and who is paying how much? And then those who are contributing, they can also see your projects. How are you doing, okay? So all of your information from the website will be coming there. That's why we said it is a well-regulated legal platform. There's no reason for you to already to contribute through these platforms. This is another one, GoFundMe, uh, which is also quite popular and uh, anyways, and uh, uh, usual traffic is like two to three million per month, okay? Um, and uh, it's free to sign up, 7.9% uh, and 0.30 per donation. And uh, so it comes about 9.2.25 uh, total fee of non-profit projects, okay? And they do fund a lot of uh, projects, huh? national news and events, accidents, emergencies, animals and pets, babies and kids, family, business, celebration, community competition, KT parts, and so on. There's so many categories available in this platform, which they will help you to raise fund for you. Huh? So even the weddings, you can see the last one I put, even the wedding ceremony, if you want some donations from people, you can just register yourself there, put your background and the, the thing they require in the platform, they will raise the fund for you. So when you run your wedding ceremony, then it will be connected to their platform and they can, they can see you there, okay? So they say there's no uh, uh, deadline unless you choose uh, uh, a deadline for you, okay? So this is also available for you and me. Huh? I, as I said that it's also available for wedding. I know some of you are just thinking, well, maybe next time I should be registering in this uh, platform to raise some fund for my wedding, right? <laughs> All right. Um, there's another one, is Space High. Uh, this is UK based. So we said the Space High founder described as an online funding platform for neighborhood improvement projects, okay? So this is basically in England, okay? And uh, you need an approval to, uh, to run it. So this, is, this may not be open for you. Huh? This may not be open for you and me. This is another one, the European based one. They, they name it as Ulul. Huh? European, uh, but again, international opening is there, okay? Uh, the, the funding is basically on euros, but do support also other options, okay? Now, it's focused on projects that are for the betterment of the society. You have to be careful, huh? you have to be careful. So say, for example, now with the COVID, if you see that your neighborhood, people are affected, a lot of people are losing jobs and having problem or supporting the family, then you can prepare a project to support those affected people. Then you should go for Ulul, right? You will submit a proposal, they will run a campaign for you, they raise the fund that you will set the target and they will pass you the fund and you have to show them how are you using the fund. So this is also another one which can be used by you and me, right? And this is another one, uh, Crowdcube. Uh, this is based on the United Kingdom, okay? So this is basically for UK people, basically for UK people. Huh? It's for smaller projects that run for 90 days and it's for basically for donations, okay? So if anybody would like to draw some money as donation to support certain activities or helping some people in the areas, then it should be crowd queue, okay? And this is the last one that I want to show you, 33 needs, huh? 33 needs. <laughs> uh, this, this one is uh, very different from other side huh? because this one is basically for equity crowdfunding. So this one, anybody contributes through this platform would expect that the profit or earnings will be shared to them. So equity crowdfunding. And uh, this is open for all. Uh, yourself, myself also can apply. So whoever contribute to our business will be given sharing of earnings that you do at the end of the year. So the platform, three, three needs, huh? they will raise the fund for you and me. They will charge only 5% transaction fee, okay? Uh, there are some pros and cons of uh, uh, each of the platforms. Uh, this slide I will not uh, go through. I will leave it for your own reading. So what can I find raise for? Huh? So you have seen it many, but I wanted to show you again. Uh, you can have a pilot projects. You can have capital projects. You can even buy equipments for the existing machine. You can still go for crowdfunding. You like to do some feasibility study for your projects. You can go for crowdfunding. If you have any community event, that's where I think many of you could be interested also. 
you can use uh, crowdfunding for festivals, right? We have our National Day, Independence Day. Uh, you know, we, we have many occasions like that. If you want to organize certain big events with the community, you can choose the right platform and they will help you to raise the fund to support those activities. Now, why is crowdfunding growing? Uh, the crowdfunding is growing. I show you, right? Almost every four years, it's getting double, right? So, because you are making a public call to fundraise from crowd, it's not a new idea, as I explained earlier, right? It has been there since 1990s, even long time before that, right? Uh, crowdfunding has been there, but it was not well regulated. But it's getting popular because you want to have a legal framework. I know hundreds of people, you know, not hundreds, I would say hundreds, I know dozens of people. Uh, who have been cheated by uh, uh, people who has done the crowdfunding and raised the fund and then they did not return anything and they just ran away with the project. So they just lost the money and reported that, I'm sorry, I have lost everything. But he, have made, he may have used the fund for other reasons, okay? But now, crowdfunding are very well regulated, okay? It's because, number one, technological development. So now we have uh, low-cost interest and uh, uh, internet and communication tools. So you have the platform there. There is a fund for you, easily reachable to people, and then you pay them only three to seven percent of money being drawn. Okay, so technological advancement actually paves the way for the growth of crowdfunding. And then the societal changes now, uh, basically because of uh, social media like uh, Facebook. Uh, you know, we have Twitter. We have now. Telegram, uh, we have so many, right? We have so many. Instagram, those are the gatekeepers, actually. Those are the gatekeepers. So, and we are all getting into it. Uh, even our four or five years kid have an uh, Instagram account, right? <laughs> uh, our kids going 15, 16 years already have an account in Facebook, and even they are more active than us, okay? So, Instagram, uh, Telegram, uh, Facebook, uh, those are getting very popular now. So, those are uh, also helping us, right? And also is due to technology advancement and having the uh, mobile phone and all the uh, tools with us, right? Um, I see my son who is only three years old. Uh, he can take my phone and he will show his uncle. This is my father YouTube channel, you know. He is not even three years now. <laughs> uh, it's another 10 days, he's going to be three years. And yesterday he was showing to his uncle Uncle, uh, he took my phone and I was showing him. You see my, my, my father YouTube channel. So he can click my handphone. He can go to, you know, at the corner where the, the logo of my YouTube channel is there. He can click there and he open a video and give it to the uncle. Uncle, listen to my father. Okay. So that's what is happening because of technological advance and all that. Society has changed a lot. Huh? So those gatekeepers are available for us and that making crowdfunding more popular. And they couldn't be factors now. Uh, it was a case in 2007 and 8, right? We had global economic crisis. Before that, we have 1997 and 1998, the global economic crisis. So when we have a crisis, people started looking for alternative, you know, uh, sources rather than banks and those traditional sources are available. Now, uh, with COVID-19 again, uh, you know, the economy of every country is, is suffering, having trouble. Many industries are dry, dying, so uh, companies to survive uh, are looking forward for alternative sources of finance. And so crowdfunding even will grow faster, will become more popular. And I'm very sure now, those of you are listening to me, many of you are starting, many of you started thinking, I'm going to use it, you know, for, for projects. I'm going to raise the fund. It's so easy. Why shouldn't I, right? Why shouldn't I? If I have a very good business idea, why shouldn't I use crowdfunding to raise fund and run a project. Why not? I may fail, but I can start, right? So we say as a failure is the pillar of success. So those people that I have shown you at the beginning, the photos around the world who are the richest men at this moment, they were not rich people before. It just about a business idea and they knew where to raise fund and how to run the business. They become rich men, okay? And at the same time, I think most of you have noticed it as you are university students are mostly uh, the interest rate has fallen historically low level, right? Uh, in my country, I think five years before, interest rate was about 18%. And you know how much now in, in Bangladesh. And uh, in Malaysia, interest rate has been like 3 to 4%. So it, 
so when uh, you have that kind of uh, interest rate there so definitely crowd crowdfunding campaign uh, some offer some kind of uh, better returns you know better returns available on the street okay let me look at uh, go through some of the benefits uh, of crowdfunding right i think uh, uh, as i have presented so far it should be very clear again uh, let me explain a bit uh, through crowdfunding platform your reach should be very high if you are using appropriate platform you are reaching the whole world within a day or a few days okay so the reach is very wide presentation when you are creating a crowdfunding campaign then uh, you go through invaluable process of looking at your business from the top level you know because you are preparing a very good content you are preparing a website and when you prepare a visual presentation people after listening to the video they get uh, interested immediately they go to your website so when you prepare your website when you prepare the video content you will really got to know your business very well okay so you will have very good understanding of what you are doing or what you will be doing okay you will also develop very good uh, pr and marketing uh, efforts you know through the social media and all that uh, uh, you know the the, the media and platform that you are going to use so that will help you even after starting your uh, operation okay so those team are going to develop the drive to raise fund for you these people will help you to drive the company to go further okay and then the validation of a concept so when you are developing a business plan remember we said it all starts with ideas but not all ideas are good ideas ideas got to be screened okay so when you screen the ideas and we find it relevant and useful it become a concept become a concept so when you are running a campaign in crowdfunding you have an opportunity to see whether your ideas are very good so we are validating the idea we are validating the concept that you have developed the next one is efficiency uh, that's what is one of the best thing that online crowdfunding is its ability to centralize and streamline your fundraising effort so you will be uh, they will be building a single and comprehensive profile to which you can funnel right uh, all your prospects and potential investors so eliminate the need to pursue each of them individually so your efficiency if you are going person to person as we traditionally do but platform is going to reach everyone at the same time so we are not going one to one okay and then when you are reaching one to one you have to print materials and you have to print multiple copies of it and going to people to people and you are going to give it to them individually but when you are using a platform the platform is going to run the campaign so you are not going to print anything so it reduces the cost in fundraising okay that answered the question of in case uh, some uh, one of you may ask me why should i pay seven percent or five percent is costly uh, but actually it's not when you do manually is become more costly because you're going to print a lot of things you're going to drive to people places you're going to meet people you're going to explain to people it is more costly than giving five to seven percent to the platform okay it is cheaper they are going to do everything for you what you are going to give them is the video presentation the contents and your own website okay that's what you are doing when you are using a crowdfunding what makes crowdfunding different from other funding okay crowdfunding reaches widely by technology right so it reduces the side of funding for individual contributors that comes about right so it make it easy for a wider group of people to support a business because the process of crowdfunding is very public one so involves many people it can and does therefore you develop a powerful campaign tool that builds a very good network for you you know to further your business it validates your idea it validates the concept and it builds some kind of very good image for you even during the campaign of crowdfunding so later when you run the business that image is going to be sustained and helpful for you for some entrepreneurial projects uh, it has the advantage of accelerating the process of setting up a business because you are now you know on online raising the fund parallelly uh, you will start uh, like marketing research publicity fundraising all comes together you know but traditionally it goes one by one but when you are doing crowdfunding because you are doing through a platform and online so these all activities can run concurrently simultaneously 
at the same time. Now, let me uh, go through some advantages and disadvantages. The first advantage, definitely, it is an accessible project. It's open to all, can be carried out on your own terms. So you have every freedom to design it the way you want. So you put the terms and conditions, right, when you design the project. It's your team. It's your team. And it's open to everyone. Anybody who like to contribute can contribute. And it's open to everyone in the world. It's not only from your area or from your country. It's not from only from your religion or your you know, uh, race. It's open to everyone. Anyone likes your projects will contribute. That's the first advantage. Second, definitely you are in control. The promotion and selling the projects is responsibility of your group. Because you are the one who is developing the content, the video, the website, right? So everything in your control. Traditionally, if you are issuing shares, it's not in your control, you know. Those of you understand the process to issue shares. You have to apply to Security Exchange Commission. Then Security Exchange Commission approves. Then you have to approach an investment bank. The bank will price the share and they will sell for you, right? So it is not under your control. Okay, so here you are in absolute control of running the campaign and raising the fund for you, okay? It can be much more uh, than uh, money because you are attracting a lot of people getting loyal to your company. It's not only money, okay? It's not only money. It's about the heart, you know, that get, get, get connected on the process. So you are developing some kind of feeling of ownership, you know? The ownership kind of thing is coming. So they're giving you the money and they're, they're thinking this is my project. They will not think this is your project because they are contributing and they think they are, this is my project, okay? This is the third advantage. Uh, what money it does bring can be different from traditional investment because we said my fund raised through crowdfunding are unrestricted and can be used in all elements of your projects, okay? Um, if you are drawing in a traditional uh, investment method, the money may not be available for every aspect. For example, like even um, a prototype development, a screening of ideas and all that, uh, where the crowdfunding is available. Traditional investment uh, in those steps or projects, stages of projects, the money may not be available from traditional one. But crowdfunding, it is available for all stages of a product or projects. It is very quick. It can be raised within two, three months as you want, as quickly as you want. As long as you have a very good video presentation, you have your own website, very good content being developed, and you choose the right and very good platform, then it can be raised very soon, very fast. But uh, you know that if you are applying to a bank, uh, it's not like automatic, it takes time. It can be rejected, you have to apply again and all that happens. If you are issuing shares uh, using uh, uh, Security Exchange Commission, you know how long it takes. But this one could be very short time and guaranteed. And then also, you produce some kind of a very valuable asset. We call it as crowd asset. Eh? <laughs> I'm very sure as a finance accounting student, that could be the first time you are hearing about the term. There's a new asset. We call it crowd asset. You know? Because people who are contributing to your projects, they are contributing because they have heart in your projects. They like your projects. That's why they are contributing to your projects. So this crowd become an asset for you. So your company image. Uh, would be built, you know, by their words of mouth and, and other way of uh, spreading, the, you know, the good news about your company. Some disadvantages also there from crowdfunding, which I must uh, explain also. All right. So uh, we know in every everything, in every uh, project, everything that we run, there are some advantages and disadvantages definitely there. Okay. Uh, as individual, uh, not every one of us are perfect, right? We do have some good things and some bad things. It's very common. Okay, so crowdfunding, as I have been explaining, is a very good source of funding, but yet it does have few disadvantages also, okay? So we say it, it may not be, sorry, the grammatical mistake there, it may not be easy for certain projects, okay? So to be a success uh, takes a long time and effort to carry out continued promotion of your campaign. For certain projects, uh, it, 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 it may not be very suitable, huh? it may not be very suitable. You may have to run a longer uh, campaign to rein the fund. Many campaigns are unsuccessful. Huh? Data is available. Uh, there are many uh, one are unsuccessful, and the platform that you choose, they will never guarantee you the success. Huh? 
they will work with you. They'll prepare the things, they, they, they work with you, they build things uh, along with you, but if they fail to raise the fund, they fail. Huh? They don't take the responsibility. So if the campaign is unsuccessful, it is your responsibility. But when you are issuing shares, you, you know, through Security Exchange Commission, an investment bank, when they take the responsibility, they take the full responsibility. If they fail, it's the bank who takes the responsibility, okay, not the company. And then it is a very public process, so you must be prepared to be very open and honest, huh? <laughs> because once you are registered with uh, a crowdfunding platform, you know, every stages of you know every activity should be highlighted in the crowdfunding uh, website. You have to provide all the information. You have to provide. So now you are open to public. So when you are raising funds from the public, you're open to public. So you have got to be very honest and very open. Huh? I know a case in uh, my country, one of my relatives uh, contributed to a very good you know, company uh, run by crowdfunding. And uh, he told me the man uh, who is the CEO is a very good man. And he trusted him. He has given money. And after, you know, after two, three years until now, she says she has not got anything. And whenever she tried to ask the men, where is my project? I would like to go and visit. Okay, I'll take you sometime. I'll take you sometime. Never been taken. So those are the traditional crowdfunding, which are unsecured. Huh? I am talking about a secured crowdfunding method following a platform. The platform will ensure that your money is protected. Okay, so that is very important thing that you have to take it. Okay. Does crowdfunding produce sales? The answer is... Yes, okay, across all the crowdfunding method. So usually quarterly increase of sales uh, is there, increase right, about 24%, okay, and equity base about up 341% increase. It's because you know, because you are running a campaign, so a lot of people, thousands of hundreds of thousands of people will get to know your product and company. So you already run an advertising and marketing campaign, you know, when you are raising funds to crowdfunding, okay. Number two. If somebody asks you a question, does crowdfunding create jobs? The answer is yes, it does. May not be a very large number, but based on the data we have, 39% of respondents, you know, those uh, use uh, uh, platforms, they hired an average of 2.2 2, 2 .2 new people after crowdfunding, huh? percentage of, you know. An additional 48% reported intent to use crowdfunding proceed to create additional jobs. So when crowdfunding is being used to run a project, uh, the evidence is there that it creates new jobs for people. Does crowdfunding deter follow on invest, uh, investment? No. Uh, as I have shown you the stages and the curve, it does not, right? What crowdfunding is completed, you can proceed to business angels and traditional uh, venture capitalists, or even you can go to the bank, institution investors. There's no problem at all. So it is not true that if you use crowdfunding, you cannot use the other sources of finance. You can, right? Every project, even if you issue shares, you can still issue bond. You can still borrow money from the bank. Eh? It's a similar concept. The similar concept. What is the ROI of crowdfunding investment? In case you are going for equity crowdfunding, so it says every hour an investment, uh, at, uh, every hour invested in a crowd campaign return about four eight hundred and thirteen on average. So you are talking about collection of money uh, every hour for a crowdfunding uh, campaign. Eh? crowdfunding campaign. Huh? So the, the amount is being drawn uh, every hour is uh, as low as uh, 800 as, uh, and 13 US dollar. So you can calculate from there how much you draw per day, right? And how much could be per month, right? Now, um, what is next? So the reflection is what's next? Uh, there will be a shift of uh, platform management from idealistic activists to professional entrepreneurs. Um, usually what happens is, uh, uh, at the, until now, the, the crowdfunding uh, initiatives are mostly used, as I have shown you earlier, reward-based, you know, reward-based, so more unlike idealistic people. So you want to support some people, some activities, so you are using crowdfunding. But in, in, in years to come, uh, with COVID-19 and all that, you will soon see there will be professional interveners there, meaning that they will be lending, P2P lending, uh, uh, crowdfunding and equity crowdfunding would be more popular compared to the reward base or, or, or other form of royalty form of uh, crowdfunding, okay? Uh, platform shifting from technology to community focus. Uh, it was technology based, 
but it is definitely already moving to community focus, right? So basically, we are looking at the platform that we use, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and many other those coming in. So the campaign would be run using uh, YouTube and Facebook and other uh, that we have. Huh? And now also, the train already started uh, from domestic to international expansions of platforms. I've shown you a few platforms which are based in UK and Europe, but uh, US, and but available for all whole world, right? Anybody can draw money from there. But more and more platforms will be established, and it is going to be expanded from domestic market to international market. Okay, and ongoing rise of equity crowdfunding, as I said, uh, definitely there will be more crowdfunding based on equity because there will be more and more businesses looking forward to use crowdfunding. It's just a matter of knowing. Huh? Uh, it's getting popular and it'll be more popular as it is projected by 2025. There'll be 90 billion dollar be raised by using equity crowdfunding and um, some special projects now we want to call niche platforms like real estate which in the deep trouble now renewable energy is getting people very popular now you know sports activities all that uh, those might be the area where crowdfunding would be used for renewable energy especially the area a lot of projects are there those projects can use actually crowdfunding because people know that those uh, those projects will bring good money to them so this is what as i said right uh, Projected size of crowdfunding in 2025 is uh, 90 billion. Uh, that's the amount that uh, we are looking at uh, by equity crowdfunding. Uh, there will be front and back end cons uh, consolidation of small platforms. We are saying regulatory amendments should be there so that uh, there is no fraud or fraudulent practices available uh, across the countries. As we know that uh, even you and me are afraid of contributing to crowdfunding because of not having a strong regulatory framework, but soon you will see it that there will be a strong legal and regulatory framework there. Okay, crowdfunding education will increase and move to mainstream. Uh, that's what I have been propagating for the last few years. Uh, everywhere I go as a keynote speaker in conferences and all that, I will always promote that crowdfunding should be added in the syllabus. No business student should graduate without learning what is crowdfunding, the functions of crowdfunding, how does it work, and all that. And uh, because of my recommendation, the Daffodil International University is running this lecture series, which I, I, I'm, I'm, I feel very uh, excited. Huh? The Daffodil International University has taken this initiative to educate their students before graduation, one of the very important source of finance, especially students who have entrepreneurial minds and thinking of starting up a business. Okay, So this is going to be in the mainstream. Soon is going to be in the syllabus, embedded in the business school syllabus everywhere. Definitely, it is going to be. Increasing professionalism in campaign management, definitely, as it is getting more popularity, uh, popular and popular. So there will be more professionalism, there will be low, more, more legal framework. The platform will be getting more efficient. The software is going to be more advanced, so more professionalism is expected. Okay, And crowdfunding campaign support and preparation uh, uh, industry will grow especially with respect to equity meaning that if you are thinking of choosing a platform remember before that you have pre campaign campaign and post campaign in pre campaign basically you are coming out with a very good video content even there will be some outsourcing organization available to do that for you they'll prepare it for you and then you have to design a very good interactive website for your company the projects right so there'll be company available also there will be an industry there, you know, basically to help you preparing, doing all that for you. Okay, running the campaign through a platform. They will guide you. Do that all, right? And um, finally, I would like to end my presentation today uh, with, with this big note. Yeah? I am proposing that some of you, uh, I will expect some of you, actually to create a crowdfunding platform in your country i think i think those of you who are participating with me most of your countries no crowdfunding platform is available okay and it's not something very difficult to develop you know uh, we have seen the uber and uh, grab came in and using those applications we have our own in every country okay uh, in malaysia we have my 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 taxi, uh, my uh, what was that after Grab? That was one. It's because of COVID, I've forgotten. And in Bangladesh, they got Pathao and all that available there. <laughs> uh, with Food Panda, 
close, you know, uh, with similar sort of thing uh, we have a lot in my country. So you can actually think, you started, you started to think that uh, you would like to create a platform. So you will charge five to seven percent to draw money for people who would like to start the business. So you can actually now uh, think of hiring a uh, few people who are expert in software. Tell them this is what you want. Introduce them with the, some of the platforms available. They can then they can develop the platform maybe well, and you can earn a lot of money. You can be a millionaire or billionaire just coming with the platform. It's like um, online platform that you see. Facebook, uh, he became billionaire, right? Uh, YouTube, uh, Google, whoever came first, they became billionaire in a very short time. So those of you who are participating, majority of you are from Malaysia and Bangladesh. And uh, I'm not very sure how many other countries are there. I'm very sure there are many students from many other countries. But look at your country, whether there is any crowdfunding platform available. If it's not there, it is a, an opportunity for you. You can actually come out with a platform, introduce it in your market. You know, whatever legal uh, procedures you have to follow, you have to follow up. And then you develop a platform and you can be a billionaire, inshallah. Okay. With this note, uh, I would like to end uh, my presentation today. And uh, I really hope that uh, this presentation uh, uh, sheds some light on the concept of crowdfunding. Uh, the concept of crowdfunding, uh, the functions of crowdfunding, uh, how does uh, crowdfunding works, and whether you and me, people like us, can use crowdfunding or not. You know, all sort of thing I have uh, tried my best to cover, and, and I, I hope that uh, really is going, is, is really going to be help you. And I express my uh, gratitude to all of you, those of you who are participating now. 